Hello, everyone in Sammy land. Welcome to Sammy Rabbit's Childhood Money Memories. This is the talk show for parents and kids, kids and parents, families. That's something Sammy Rabbit and I believe in and are, have dedicated our whole mission to trying to help kids, parents, and families make better money choices. Each show, we feature a special guest to share one of their first or favorite childhood money memories. Maybe it's something that made them really happy. Maybe they made a great money choice, like uh, making a habit of saving their pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and, and dollars, you know, or maybe they made a bad money choice. Maybe they spent too much money on junk food or comic books. Is that possible? I don't know if it is or not, but I have a feeling our today's special guest may know. And with that said, let me now introduce our special guest, Tony Stewart. Everybody out there in Sammy Land, give Tony a big woo-hoo. Welcome, Tony. Hey, Sam. Glad to be here with you and uh, all your friends today out there in Sammy Land. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Uh, friends, uh, let me share a little bit of background information about Tony before we ask him for one of his first or favorite childhood money memories. I think it's most important to know that uh, Tony is a father. I believe you have one son. Is that right, Tony? I, I do. He's in high school right now. Oh, perfect. All right. That's a Hey, that's a great age, according to some people. <laughs> <laughs> depends on the day. It depends on the day. Tony, uh, for his career, his profession, he's a financial preparedness expert and advocate. He's also the head financial wellness advocate at Paperwork. And we're going to ask him a little bit about Paperwork later. That sounds like a fascinating name for a company, Paperwork. Uh, he's also an internationally recognized uh, author, podcaster, and speaker. And I have to tell you, Tony, Sammy Rabbit and I, we love authors. I hope everybody out there in the audience does as well. We think, you know, developing a, a great reading habit is as critical as developing great money habits. All right, Tony, with that said, are you ready for the big question? I am ready, Sam. All right, Tony, would you please share with us one of your first or favorite childhood money memories? Well, you know, I've been going back and forth on it. Of course, there's so many. I, I'm going to actually go with one in high school to be a little bit different um, because it's when I first discovered that you could earn money and enjoy yourself at the same time. And I think that's something that people don't learn even when they're adults. So I had a job working as a gym monitor in high school. And so I was collecting money at the gym, but at the same time, I was able to play basketball, you know, in between. Uh, so it was great. I got to watch the gym. I got to play basketball and I got to get paid for doing it. So oh my it goodness. Fun. People paid you to play basketball and watch the gym. Yeah. Well, they fortunately didn't pay me to uh, pay me to play basketball well, but <laughs> <laughs> So that'd be a whole know, different thing. Following up uh, on that a little bit, uh, what has your experience been in regards to when people really like and love their work? Uh, they seem to do it better. Is that what your experience has been? A hundred percent. Not only do they do it better, but you know you're excited about going to work and doing whatever you're up to to earn money. It, is, it makes it a whole different way of life. It makes it much, it, you enjoy life so much better. You know, I hear a lot of people say like when they love their work, it doesn't even seem like work. Sometimes they'll look at their watch and they'll say, oh my goodness, it's 8.30 at night. I should go home. <laughs> Have you heard those kind it's, of stories? A hundred percent. And it's because, you know, when you're enjoying doing something, you lose track of time. You're, you're not thinking, oh boy, is this going to be over yet? You know, just like going to the dentist. Now that... I don't think you can get paid for. <laughs> Unless you're the dentist. <laughs> yeah, there, there you but, go. <laughs> but but go, going to the dentist is a different, uh, a different experience. Uh, Tony, let me ask you, is there anything that you wish maybe you had known when you were a child or a teenager, when you were growing up about money? Yeah, the thing that I wish I had known about money is that 
if you have a credit card and this happens when you're in high school and college is that you know going into debt is bad that you have to pay off debt you know when you get your first credit card you don't realize that sooner or later there's really high interest rates that there's always a cost for borrowing money from somebody else and so it's the inverse of savings is that you have to pay to use somebody else's money where if you're saving somebody else is paying you to save okay money. you know that that's what i've heard people advise a lot i think that's a sammy riffic uh, gold carrot tip that you you want to earn interest have someone pay you interest you don't want to be paying interest like on credit cards now kids that doesn't mean you don't pay your bills you pay them what it means is if you do charge something do your best to pay it off immediately so you don't have to pay interest and you know this is one of the reasons uh, we love authors is they use interesting words like in verse <laughs> which i think kids kids that means the opposite so paying interest is the opposite of earning interest when you earn interest it's going to grow your financial wealth and wellness and when you're having to pay interest guess what it's growing someone else's <laughs> wealth and, and wellness. Is that right, uh, Tony? Yeah, that's 100%. And I think this is really good for kids to know is because my son has a green light savings card and it's really popular now for kids. And I'm sure there's some kids out there in Samaland who have their own little cards to, to be careful uh, that you don't spend more than you have in your bank account. Now, you know, this has never happened to me before. I want to know if I heard you correct. Did you give me 100% there, Tony? <laughs> I'm sorry? Did you give me 100%? You agreed with me 100%? I agreed with you 100%, Sam. Oh, my goodness. Big circle round of applause for you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's two thumbs up, Sammy Riffick. <laughs> uh, maybe you could share a little bit of, uh, with us, you know, about what you talk to your uh, son about money or what it is, maybe what it is that he's doing that you really like and maybe something he's doing that concerns you or challenges you as a parent, a lesson you're trying to communicate with them or want to communicate with them that maybe right now isn't wor working. Well, so what he's doing that I really like is we've spent time talking about investing and so we've talked about, I'm a value investor. And what that means is that I look for companies to invest in that are at a low cost. So another way to think of it is to buy something that's on sale. And so that's something that we've talked quite a bit about is when you look at a company's stock, before you invest in it, you see if it's either at a high price or if it's at a low price, which means that it's on sale, which is the same thing as if you go to buy a pair of shoes and they're on sale, it's a much better deal. So we've been able to talk about that. So he's starting to recognize that when he spends his money to look for value and to buy things and pay less money for them than paying full price, like for a pair of sneakers, like he did on the internet and he bought them for over you know, the price that he could have found them somewhere else. So that's the challenge is that spending money and not always taking time to think, is this a good way to spend my money? And so it's a, it goes together. It's just, is this a good price that I'm paying for something? Is this the right price? You know, that's what smart spenders do. And Sammy Rabbit likes to say, smart spending is a great, habit so boy you there's a lot of lessons there and a lot of great rich financial words you use tony like uh investing getting value value uh for uh your 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 money your you know when we use our money and when we earned it we're 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 giving up our time and energy that's a, a big sacrifice a big trade-off and it's important i think to think <laughs> and to plan your, your, your spending, your use of your money, your time, and your energy. And, you know, I want to say, 
I really love your mantra. Uh, get ready. You're the you're the financial preparedness advocate, and so being ready, boy, that's a great habit too. Kudos to you, uh, Tony. Anything you want to say about the importance of being ready and being prepared? You know, before you do, I also want to say that's the uh, Girl Scout and Boy Scouts motto, basically, and I don't think it is accidentally. No, I, I don't think so. And that, and that is the point of get ready is to think about what you're going to do before you do it and be ready to do it is. So for example, if you're going camping with your family, you want to make sure you have a lantern so you can see it light. You want to have make sure you have your sleeping bag. But at the same time, you want to be prepared if somebody gets an injury and you need band-aids. So you always want to think about what might happen so that it's not, it doesn't lead to a bad event or a bad outcome. And the same thing happens with your money is that's the whole purpose of insurance is you purchase insurance in the event that something bad might happen so that you're prepared. So you don't have to pay all that money from your own pocket. So that, that makes a lot of sense. You're ready for bad surprises, emergencies, and you're ready for good surprises as, as well. You know, that's what being prepared does and saving your money, making a habit of it has you more prepared for both good and bad surprises. All right, here's a question I'd like to ask you, Tony. This is a question I like to ask everyone. It's a question I asked myself before I created Sammy Rabbit. And that question is, is if you can only teach a child, and for that matter, maybe even an adult, one money habit or one money principle, what would that money habit or principle be? To learn, to oh. educate yourself. I would start off with that. Well, actually two things. One is to learn, but then learn how to use what you've learned. So learn how to take action. So you can learn how to save money, but then you need to learn how to save money. So it's not just saving money, but it's how am I going to save money? And what does that mean for me? So learn and then find out how to use what you've learned. You know, I don't know if it was Benjamin Franklin or Warren Buffett. I'm starting to get the two guys confused. <laughs> <laughs> but, but one of them or somebody else said something like, you know, the best investment is in knowledge. Sammy Rabbit likes to say learning is a great habit. And so there's a lot to learn about. And you can also learn about your profession and many other things. In general, I've discovered, Tony, that, you know, the more a person learns, often the more they're able to earn. Has that been your experience? Always is the more you learn is the more comfortable you are with something, but also the better choices you're able to make. So if we get back mm. to sneakers, is if you learn where the best deal is on a pair of sneakers, and you know something about sneakers, you might say, hey, this is a store or the mall where I'm gonna pay the less money for this pair of sneakers. And so you can apply that to all the rest of yourself. If you wanna find the cheapest ice cream in your neighborhood, that's the place to go, but you have to learn where the cheapest ice cream is and then be able to take action and go buy that cheap ice cream. And hopefully it's the flavor you like. Interesting. We might disagree a little on that, <laughs> <laughs> but that'll That's be a okay. different podcast. No, you know, I had this thing about the word cheap and I think you might agree with me. I, I don't know that you really want to buy, say cheap. You want to spend less and get more value. But in my That's mind, a better way to say it. Oh, Tony, thank you. You know, yeah. thank you, Tony Stewart. I am I glad you that. caught me. On I, that. I, I so, get, I get, I get your point. Uh, we, we, you want to, you want to learn, do your homework, and maximize the value you can get for each dollar you use. Whether you're spending it on ice cream, which Sammy the Rabbit and I love, <laughs> or who if doesn't you're like ice cream. There's nothing like ice cream except for maybe comic books and music. I know, I know you love those too, Tony. But uh, 
or you want to get great value if you're investing your money in a company. So uh, that's a great tip. Let me switch gears a little bit on you. You know, one of the things we're trying to do here is, is as I shared earlier, is, is we want kids and parents to have lots of great money conversations. We, we've heard from uh, people and research and studies that, you know, it can be challenging at a time for parents to talk to their kids about money. And so we want to break down as many barriers and make it as easy as possible. That said, we think the more what I'll call financial education that's out there may be the better. And we hear a lot of dialogue about this question, should schools teach personal finance? Should they be teaching kids about money? Do you have any thoughts on that topic? 100% yes, they should be. Money is an essential life skill and learning how to use money is as important as you know, so many other things that we pick up in school is because no matter what you do in life, you're going to be dealing with money. You're gonna have a house, you're gonna have insurance, you're gonna have savings, you're gonna have bills. We all deal with money throughout our lives. So, you know, we should learn about it in school and we should learn how it works is math skills are important in learning how to use money. We need to be able to read so we can learn about money. Uh, you know, now money is not part of everything and money should not you know, be the source of everything we do, but it's important to understand that money does have an impact on different parts of your life and you don't wanna live your life stressed out about your money. So you need to be in control of your money rather than having your money be in control of you. Oh, I love that last statement. Be in control of your money instead of having your money be in control of you. You know, I want to be very candid and frank. I totally agree with what you just shared. And I don't want kids or parents uh, to ignore how important a role money plays in life in a person's financial wellness, their security, their freedom. That said, it isn't everything, but it is very important. And managing our money, developing great money habits, those are skills we can practice and work on and develop to continually, systematically, and predictably, predictably <laughs> improve our financial wellness, security, and stability. All right, before we close out here in a minute, I would love for you to share a little bit with us about this company called Paperwork. So Paperwork is a way for people to organize their financial life, all things with their money, but also to get insights and to learn about something. So if somebody puts in something about their mortgage, they may get a insight about a portion of their mortgage called a private mortgage insurance where they could save money by not having that on their mortgage. So what we try to do is we try to help people find and learn about different parts of their financial life and then receive insights, as I mentioned, that they can take action on. So that's what's different, but it's also a great way for parents to share financial stuff with their kids where their kids can open up their own account and keep track of their own financial life. But it's especially good for kids who are going off to college, for older kids who are starting to really experience having to track their expenses and everything else. Okay, so pa Paperwork is a company that helps uh, people uh, organize their finances and track them, something, something like that. Is that it? Learn about them and then learn how to take action. Okay. That, that's oh. the important thing is, it's not, you know, like, you know, it's not watching a video, it's watching a video and then learning how to use what you've learned. And that's, that's the key is learning knowing how action. to take action. Learning plus action. Yes. That's more powerful. Uh, you know, uh, I almost forgot this. This is something else I have to ask you about. Uh, when you were a, a kid, I think you shared this with me previously, but, uh, I guess you loved 
collecting comic books and you love music, collecting records. Would you share a, l- a little bit about your passion and love for comics and, and music? Well, you know, <laughs> they, they both weren't related, but um, I, I did love um, collecting comic books. So that was something I would save my birthday money for and you know any money I got as a kid uh, and I'd buy comic books. Uh, that's what I like to do with my money. And then as I got older is, you know, had a record collection, you know, but it was the same thing, you know, I would save money to buy records. You know, when I had, I worked as a gym monitor, as, as we talked about at the beginning of the podcast is I would use that money to buy records or concert tickets. So, you know, working as a teenager allowed me to have the freedom to do those things that I want to do. I didn't have to wait for my grandmother to give me $5 on my birthday, I could go out and buy what I wanted or do what I wanted when I wanted to. I had freedom. Wow. You know, one of uh, Sammy Rabbit's mantras is saving makes us strong. You must That must have made you feel really good to be able to do that on your own is what I'm thinking. Yeah, it was a great feeling is, you know, knowing that you can make your own decisions and you know, experience what you want. You know, isn't that the title of a song? Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so. All right. On that note, I want to thank you, uh, Tony Stewart, for being a guest with us on Sammy Rabbit's Childhood Money Memories. Uh, everybody out there in Sammy Land, that's it for today's uh, program. We hope you had as much fun learning with Tony as Sammy Rabbit and I did. I want to close by encouraging parents and kids again to talk with each other about money. Something Tony shared with me uh, previously is that he thinks having a family personal finance night, maybe once a month or once every two weeks, is a great idea. Sammy Rabbit and I agree 1,000%. 1,000%. That's a great Sammy Rabbit gold carrot idea, Tony. Thank you for sharing it with me. That said, we want to wish everybody a sammy Rific day. Thank you again, Tony. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks, Sam. Bye, everyone.